I was going to sing a song called The Calling this afternoon, um, which came to me when I ended up in Alice Springs a couple of years ago. I'd been called to do a, um, a ceremony in the desert with some Aboriginal women just next to Uluru for five days in the scorching heat, and I wasn't allowed to sing at all during that time. So when I came home, I was staying at a backpacker's, and um, they were having an open mic night the night before I was flying out to go back to the East Coast. And they said to me, do you want to sing something? Because we've got an open mic, we've got a spot left. So I said, yeah, I'll get, I'll get up and sing. And I just said, look, guys, you don't need to clap or do anything. I just really need to sing on this land because I haven't been able to do it all week and I need to do it before I fly out tomorrow. And then so I sang my song and it was pretty silent afterwards. And then I just kind of got off stage in a bit of a stupor, like I felt like my time there was done and I was ready to get on the plane the next day. And then I went to, over to a table and I was just sitting by myself, just really debriefing from the whole week. And this big dude, like mohawk, heavily tattooed, missing teeth, army boots, comes up to me and he says, what are you drinking? <laughs> and I looked at him And I just got a feel for him and I just learned. Oh, another one of those. So he went and got me a wine and he came back to the table and he said, with a voice like that, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this land's got something for you. I've got a house, I'll help get you a job. I don't want anything from you, I just want to see you shine. And so this guy gave me a house for two, two weeks and connected me with a lot of people that he knew. And I, as I was walking around in Alice Springs, in this frontier town, which is very, very dense to be in, very dense, very colonial, very racist, I was just thinking, what the hell am I doing here? What have I done? Oh, my God. <laughs> but I had been called, and I knew that I had to honour the call. And I knew that whatever was going to happen was going to really shake me out of my comfort zone. And the calling didn't feel good. It wasn't sort of all light and airy fairy, but it was like the Earth Mother was saying to me, I've really got something to teach you, child, so you stay on this land and let me guide you. And then seven weeks later, I met my man and moved to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it wasn't seven weeks later, but I met him seven weeks later and we had a long-distance relationship. And then he said, come to New Zealand. So I came to New Zealand in time for the February earthquake in Christchurch. <laughs> and I felt called to stay there too and not leave because it was all getting too hard. So sometimes it's tough. You know, the calling can really shake us to our core. And I wanted to share that story to give you the context for the song. But then I decided the story was really cool, but I don't want to sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> because I think you all know what it's like to be called and you're all here so I don't need to sing you another song to remind you of how you need to remember your callings because you have all been called and you are all here and there's been so much information and beautiful insight shared by everybody to remind you of how important it is that you walk your truth and express who you are and express your uniqueness. So I'll just share with you my, my journey of that because I can, I can amp it up a little bit more. The calling's quite mellow and quite, it's like it's come from the desert and it just kind of stays in the desert. But I think this one here is, is quite uh, universal. Mm. Give me some juice, Thais. Thank you, thank you for much. Mm-hmm. 